Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Yeah, hello and welcome everybody, um, also from my side and also uh, thanks to the organizers for having me. Uh, really a nice opportunity uh, as I'm a real big uh, fan of Norway um, to, to speak here. Um, but uh, not, not here today for nature and landscape or for the great people, but for APEC, um, the Upper Package and De uh, Dependency Manager. Uh, my name is Sebastian Wolf. Um, I'm with SAP for over 15 years now, quite a long time, uh, based in Waldorf uh, and nowadays doing uh, some architecture work. It's called uh, Central Engineering, so we are basically um, yeah, um, consulting uh, higher management when it comes to technology strategy, what uh, things uh, we need to do with the cloud platform, uh, external technology and so on and so on. But of course, you also need to do some real life coding. Uh, and that's uh, why I started this project, um, which I want to talk a, a little bit uh, today. Yeah, um, we already heard it uh, in, I think it was on Paul's slides, right? Um, ABAP is some kind of a special snowflake. Um, and uh, that comes for certain special reasons. Well, we have over 30 years of history, um, and uh, you also mentioned the considerable evolution, in, especially in the last years. Um, actually, I was a member of the team who did quite some stuff in that area um, several years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, some things are still there or are at least planned, yeah, as we heard a few, um, few moments ago. So uh, you still need to do an in-system development. <coughs> Local development still needs to be done somewhere. Um, a full-fledged ABAP instance is really expensive. Um, version control is proprietary, yeah. And yeah, what comes in addition, yeah, we also heard it, um, yeah, when it comes to NPM and Node, they have a real, real, and other development language, programming languages, they have a really, really solid dependency management. Yeah? If you want to develop uh, with other people, if you want to build on top of libraries, if you want to build on top of other components, you don't want to implement everything on your own and you can't basically rely that everything is in the system as it was there or as it has been before for um, decades uh, in an ABAP system. Um, and we certainly need to do something in the other world um, for uh, these, let's say, for the other world new development scenarios. Um, ABAP Git was also mentioned before. Will it come to the rescue? Well, um, you might think so. Um, and um, that's also a reason why we also adopted it in the cloud platform as uh, a central means to import external source code, um, either from existing on-premise um, solutions so Z coding, Z coding, or when it comes to sharing code uh, among developers um, from separate companies or even within the company. Yeah, and um, this ABAP on sub cloud platform, some or pretty much everybody in the ABAP world also knows the code name Steampunk. It has become more or less some kind of the official code name. Um, the, as I said, the custom code can be imported with, uh, with ABAP Git and uh, the artifact transport between different instances, if you have some, uh, is done with another technology, uh, also based on Git, we're called GCTS. Um, however, we also have some limitations. Um, I don't have these fancy visualizations as Paul had, um, so sorry for that, I'm pretty much on the official slide deck and stuff, yeah. So, um, However, uh, it's still the case, I uh, probably don't repeat that in detail, custom code can only use whitelisted objects, you get a lot of problems um, when you want to import existing Z code to your system, um, which makes uh, ports of existing solutions really hard. Yeah? And we have concrete projects running with customers and partners, um, they are really crying for help. Yeah? And that needs to change. Um, so, um, and one step towards that, towards uh, such solutions is that um, not everything uh, needs to be baked in a single solution, not everything needs to be baked in, in a huge blob whatsoever, or um, things which, which is deployed uh, in an ABAP system, but we uh, need to go um, to a 
development model. We need to come to a development model which more resembles uh, a development model which is also out there, uh, let's say in the, I would not say in the free world, yeah, in the world outside of SAP with normal development languages. You have reuse libraries um, which you build on, which is simply declare and it's automatically taken into account when uh, at uh, build time or at execution time, depending on the, uh, on the uh, programming language which you have. Um, or um, as another alternative, you port or adopt this reuse functionality from not whitelisted components, because as you know, uh, normal ABAP developers simply use function modules, classes whatsoever, which they find in the system. Um, of course, with a certain amount of effort, these things can also be ported. However, if still, if you have done that, you still face the problem if you uh, develop a software on top of these reuse libraries, how to declare them, yeah? Because right now, if, even if you go to the internet, you often see it in the readme, okay, this particular project needs library X, Y, Z, uh, and also you need to configure this and that, and uh, then probably it will work somehow, yeah? And that's, in 2019, probably nothing you want to do. O already earlier, but well, we are now in 2019, so this very error-prone and cumbersome uh, process is not really state of the art, and also uh, the other person need to um, follow suit. And um, yeah, of course, um, Lars von Petersen and the whole community around ABAP Git already have uh, their wishes filed in, a, in an issue on ABAP Git um, already quite a long time ago, officially, but also unofficially, probably, probably much longer. We really want to deploy a project with all dependencies automatically, period, yeah? Um, you also need to support forks, offline zip use, for example, if you distribute a zip file with all the ABAP sources also needs to work. Probably someone in the future, you want to have a central repository like Maven Central, so if you, or NPM, something like that. If you um, ship a software, you probably simply want to reference an external source. Uh, everything is automatically taken into account probably compiled and you're done. And um, especially in the ABAP world, companies are a little hesitating to uh, take everything from the outside world. So uh, a company internal repository for officially, let's say, um, endorsed dependencies or officially checked dependencies, um, which can be used exclusively, needs to, needs to be somewhere available. Yeah, this was the requirements list, but how to solve it, right? Um, can we use the package, infrastruct, uh, package interface object type? But then we have this problem with system local naming, especially when it comes to the packages. In ABAP Git, you have um, basically the uh, possibility to rename the packages. So in the source system where you develop the code, the package names are not necessarily the same as in the target system. Then uh, how to deal with versioning, uh, which is, Still not there in ABAP if you have a version um, 1 and a version 2 of one Java library, for example, you can easily declare that and even um, take that into your uh, compilation step and run in, in the runtime. In ABAP that's not working. And crucial question, as it is the community uh, work and it also has been endorsed by SAP, should it be integrated in ABAP Git or become an um, independent project? Once again, this is not invented here, right? SAP is really famous for that. We do it independently or not? Hmm? Let's see. Yeah. Um, so these were the questions. Of course, um, especially Lars uh, wasn't, uh, yeah, he also did some stuff and especially the most important thing was to declare um, on which foundation uh, the current project runs on. Um, but that's very coarse grained. Yeah, you, you can specify in the uh, .ababgit.xml file so you see here, the resolution is not that nice, but anyway, you can declare um, that it runs on sub-basis, minimum version 740, service pack 8, or 750, something like that. Mm. And it has a very tight integration into ABAP Git. But of course, it's very coarse-grained, and it doesn't work if you want to s simply declare dependency on a very small library, um, like in NPM or like in Maven, and uh, we need to do something else, also to address all the requirements which we've seen before. And uh, yeah, therefore, 
we have something now which is called APEC, um, which is yeah, very, very important at the very beginning to know that it's independent of the other package concept. So um, we don't, uh, we, we haven't leveraged the, let's say, uh, tiny little, um, well, it's not tiny little, but it's, uh, we simply wanted to avoid issues with uh, system local names, missing global naming conventions and stuff. Um, so we implemented something else which is also more in line with the standards which you see in the, in the, in the wild, right? And um, the definition of a package, of a reuse package, of a library, a component, now um, follows basically the convention which you also see in the, in the Java world with Maven. So it's a group ID, artifact ID, and version, where a group ID more or less is the, the company or the organization which belongs uh, or which owns this package. Artifact ID is the package name itself, for example, APAC or something which we see in a minute, and version is more or less self-explaining. And then um, that's the definition side. So each and every reuse component needs to get a, a definition side if it wants to be reused, if it can be reused. And if you have uh, dependencies yourself as a reuse, uh, as a package, as a software um, application, then you can declare explicit dependencies once again based on this group ID, artifact ID, and version. Yeah. And the clue is it's fully compatible with ABAP Git. Actually, it's the only existing implementation right now. But in the near future, um, it's, well, if the community wants to do that because it's open source, um, you can basically implement it in any, any solution which you uh, might think of uh, in the ABAP uh, community, in the ABAP um, ecosystem uh, to declare dependencies. And uh, yesterday, no, day, day before yesterday, I actually met Lars in person because I took the train from Germany to Oslo and uh, I spent the night in Copenhagen. And he, it seems that he already has another um, chance where, where APEC can be integrated in one of his open source projects. So yeah, that's already uh, going on. And uh, yeah, some words uh, about uh, the rationale of this uh, decision. Um, yeah, why it needed to uh, happen a little earlier than originally planned. Because I said it's some kind of a, a project which I did uh, or besides my usual architecture work. The steampunk whitelist might really not grow fast enough and we need to enable an open source community or a development community for steampunk. Yeah. So. Um, Otherwise, people want, needed to write readmes, needed to write complex explanations, how to, let's say, uh, leverage existing, existing libraries, and that's certainly nothing you want to do uh, when you really want to uh, encourage people to, to develop. Yeah? And hopefully, eventually, some when, all the things uh, on .abap.org, um, I think a screenshot of that was also on Paul's slides, um, uh, can then also be uh, become steampunk enabled uh, projects, steampunk enabled libraries with APEC, for example, it makes it much easier to, to use that. Yeah, um, I said it's open source. Uh, however, um, it's simply more or less a very first version. It's currently available uh, on steampunk. Um, and the integration is done with uh, the ABAP Git plugin for ADT, ABAP development pro tools, uh, ABAP in Eclipse. Um, and the export uh, to uh, APEC is currently this uh, on-premise only scenario. So the currently uh, only official way of migrating uh, projects or exporting projects. However, um, I think I missed the disclaimer at the very beginning, but uh, no promise, right? So disclaimer stuff. In the near future, that will change, of course, because you also want to export stuff uh, straight away from ADT. And also this no versioning um, is supposed to change really soon. However, you need to go out with something um, and um, that's how it looks like right now. That's um, the declaration side now, the APEC, the so-called APEC manifest. As we don't have um, fancy JSON, XML, other text editors or even text files in an ABAP system, we need to find other, other means to do that, right? You can't simply say, okay, I have now this XML, this JSON file or YAML file or whatsoever and store it on an ABAP system, transport it or export it 
no, yeah, <laughs> simply not possible. So um, the uh, the workaround is basically that you store everything in a class, for example, yeah, which gets automatically consumed when you export the export the package, and which contains all the information. And as a nice uh, side effect, you can also use it for uh, other uh, applications in the ABAP system. For example, if we're talking about automated CI/CD tools, that's the way to go, because um, you don't need an interpreter. It's full, fully typed in ABAP as usual, and you can simply say, "Okay, get me the information from this class. You're done." Yeah, so that's also a nice advantage. Um, in order to make it automatic, uh, automated, uh, you need to implement a marker interface. It's called IF APEC Manifest. It's in all uh, steampunk systems. And it's um, with a small Z in front of it, if you install one of the newest versions of ABAP Git, uh, automatically on your system yeah? to uh, make this pretty much possible yeah? so that uh, all the automated stuff works. And um, the only thing that this marker interface does is that um, it only has one single field called descriptor, and this descriptor has uh, the aforementioned information, so group ID, artifact ID, version. And uh, for now, git URL, as I said, the only implementation which we have right now is um, ABAP git. And um, optionally, of course, if you have dependencies, and that's the concrete example which we also see in a minute in the demo, this one has now a dependency to the gr group ID sub.com artifact ID ABAP platform double Y with uh, a concrete Git URL. In the future, of course, um, you might see also, or we could get rid of this Git URL if we have something like Maven Central, central repository, um, where um, these dependencies can be automatically resolved, um, either a company internal or globally in, in a central repository. Yeah, and uh, that's now the ABAP declaration side. How does it look like in Git or in your favorite version control system? Okay, only have ABAP Git right now. Um, so once the system, so ABAP Git detects an implementation of this marker interface in your project, it automatically generates, you don't need to do anything, yeah? Just activate this class and you're done. And the rest is automatically done by ABAP Git. It automatically generates another file called .apec minus manifest.xml, um, which contains now this information which we've seen before in a standard serialized um, XML file, which can then be um, automatically interpreted by uh, client software, for example, ADT. Yeah, and um, just probably we go back, remember that. So here we have group ID, artifact ID. This one is called JAK, version uh, 0.0.1, repository type ABAP Git, as said, upwards compatible for new, inform, uh, for new uh, implementations. Uh, that's also automatically done. And once we go back, that's basically just the thing which is automatically generated straight from this coding here. Yeah, and um, now, one, now it's serialized on a Git repository on, for example, GitHub. Um, and then uh, how does it look like when I import this software? Yeah. That's, of course, also very important. Otherwise, OK, we have the declaration and we have the stuff. But hmm, OK, how do I get it in? And um, that's now done with uh, the standard ABAP Git import uh, already there in ADT. So once you connect to a Steampunk system, um, have the ABAP Git view running and press uh, link repository. And if you uh, use a repository which uh, leverages APEC, you get um, an additional page in this import step, uh, which makes you uh, possible to uh, declare or to import all the dependencies automatically. Yeah? So, um, Normally, for, for normal um, ABAP Git dependencies, you won't see that. So that's only coming up if you have dependencies declared by APEC. Uh, you need to provide a package. Um, and the uh, good thing is, once you press OK, everything is automatically imported, exactly what we had at the very beginning. 
as requirement, I want to import all dependencies automatically. I don't want to press, I, I want to do, don't want to do the wizard twice, three times, four times, uh, and so on, depending on how many dependencies I have. Yeah? The system should do the things automatically for me. Very important. Yeah. And that's now something we will have a look at. Right? So, oh, lagging a bit. Hopefully it works. Good. Um, probably it's a little tiny, right? <laughs> probably I reset the resolution a bit. Of course, we have still have some time. About so. Let's do it like that. Yes. Hopefully it's some, yeah, that should be better now. So um, on the left hand side, you have basically a standard uh, ABAP steampunk project. Um, so, uh, and here uh, in uh, the view section, you can have this ABAP git repositories. If you don't, uh, if you don't see it, Simply uh, use control three and say abap git uh, and you're there. As an example, we have uh, the <laughs> notorious uh, S-flight example already imported, of course. Um, but um, of course, we want to have this uh, example right now here, uh, which I promised. And um, this example is actually um, available publicly on GitHub uh, as an official SAP sample. Um, all the links are of course later also in the, in the slides. Uh, it's just github.com slash SAP and then ABAP platform JAK. Um, the sample project is really simple. It's a steampunk compatible um, application or no, not application library, which sits on top of another library. Yeah, so in order to show the, the dependencies. Um, the dependent library is some kind of a poor man's um, RTTI solution because uh, RTTI is not yet available on Steampunk. Um, and in order to, let's say, convert automatically um, JSON to ABAP and back, there's also no official library yet available on Steampunk. Uh, I did the hard work, it really was crazy. It also did it with the very initial version of the whitelist to uh, implement a JSON to ABAP converter based on Steampunk, and that's now the sample, the sample project. Um, the dependent library only does the, um, let's say, RTTI work, so um, checking out, okay, which uh, data uh, do I get in, analyze it, also check the component, and return this information back. And this JAK, this JSON ABAP converter as a sample project, um, uses this information from this uh, tiny little library and does the, does the conversion. So um, we have a reuse library, it's called double Y, and we have this JAK as a um, library sitting on top in order to leverage this APEC um, infrastructure. Yeah? And in order to clone that, or to import that now, uh, or first, let me check that out here. Here we have this APEC manifest. And there you see we have here group ID artifact ID like in the screenshot. And we have one dependency towards this uh, other platform double Y with this git URL. And now we want to have this automatically um, interpreted. I only, I simply clone that with uh, this uh, view here, I press this link in ABAP git repository. I need to provide the URL. And uh, if you see now here in the information section here on the bottom, that it will automatically check uh, the APEC dependencies and take them into account. Now you see it, right? So it's calculating everything, all the, even the transitive dependencies, you have a multi-level dependency list, no problem at all. Um, it's done in the background. Uh, here, you need to provide the, the package where you want to import it. And we say also pull after link so that everything is automatically imported. And this is now the new view which you see 
if you have an uh, APEC uh, enabled um, repository. So you see here, uh, this git repository, JAK references as dependency the double Y. And of course, for this dependency, we need to provide a package as well. Um, all, everything prepared, of course. And then we press next. Standard view, of course, we need to put it into a um, transport uh, request. And then um, all the dependencies, of course, we own, currently only have two. You see here, um, everything is automatically added and um, the import is running. Yeah? Otherwise, without APEC, yeah, you would have first needed to start with double Y, go through the wizard, press OK, wait for the import to complete, go back to ADT, um, do the wizard again, wait until it's completed, and then you're probably done. And now imagine that with three, four, five dependencies. You become crazy, I would say. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, how it works. Um, probably if we have some time in a few minutes, but I want to wait for questions, so we can also check out when it comes to the export. Um, maybe just a few words about that. We have, uh, of course, the documentation for the export is um, also available on um, the official ABAP Git um, uh, on the official ABAP Git page. Well, let's do it later. Probably I forgot to add it here. Anyway, um, let's go back to the presentation. Where is it? Here we go. It's lagging a bit today. Yeah, probably. I heard that Microsoft uh, slowed down this model here with a firmware update. So yeah, probably I'm affected as well. Yeah, um, takeaways for APEC. Um, it's the first time uh, actually after we've uh, launched or if we also did the collaboration with uh, Lars and the community on the uh, ABAP Git site and also I think for the whole history when, um, okay, open source development um, reuse library generation is really uh, has been made so easy and convenient to the community. Yeah? So um, it's your chance or our all chance, of course SAP also needs to do something um, to get started to use and build reuse libraries and applications. Yeah? For the sake of the whole community, probably also um, check out what is already there on .abop.org um, without that much overhead. Yeah? As you remember, you only need to implement a single marker interface with just a little bit of information and then you're done. Yeah? Could Nothing easier than that. Simply, yeah, uh, as you needed to implement or if you need to write such a, what was it, uh, package.json and N npm, right? And uh, uh, pom.xml, okay, that's complicated. Yeah. Maven is a little bit, yeah. <coughs> other, other story probably. Um, it's an independent project, open source. So uh, in case you have a scenario um, where you also have dependencies, for example, you want to build your own CI/CD pipeline in your company uh, based on ABAP, um, you can also easily use that. Um, and in the near future, of course, we will also provide, okay, no, Complete promises as well, but uh, it's at least planned to have uh, company-specific repositories, especially version dependencies are very important. Um, and probably also we will see some uh, ports to on-premise ABAP releases because uh, right now it's uh, tied to, to Steampunk, but of course many, many people are still using uh, the on-premise version um, of ABAP. Uh, and they also want to build reuse libraries, they also want to make it easier and um, that's uh, also, of course, something we could work on. Uh, after all, once again, I said I want to <laughs> wanted to wait for questions until we go back into details, probably for the export. Also, not, not only today, but um, always, feedback and improvements are very welcome. Uh, so this one was developed in close collaboration, especially with, uh, with Lars. Um, incorporated many feedback from him, but of course, um, it's not only li us uh, which makes up, who makes up the community, it's you all. And therefore, um, yeah, please try it out. If you have a Steampunk instance, uh, if you want to try it out in an on-premise system, port it, 
simply contact us. Probably we can help you. And overall, have fun with it, right? So um, development shouldn't be a burden, especially in the ABAP world. Has been that a long time. And uh, yeah, we should, we should really change that. Yeah. And then um, questions. We have 10 minutes, right? F five minutes, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. Hello. <laughs> okay, if I've got a dependency, yeah. right, and I'm importing it, and it looks in my system, and that library's already there, does it, does, it, does it say I'm already there, I don't need to import it? Uh, it's already there, and uh, currently it doesn't import it anymore. Um, however, in the near future, especially if you have version dependencies, you, uh, it checks also the dependency, the, the version which is currently in. And um, in case it's not sufficient, so you need to upgrade the version, it also upgrades the, the one which is currently in. So that's, uh, at least these are the plans. Right now, it simply says, okay, it's, not, it's, not, it's already there, uh, and we yeah, don't imp there. import it anymore. Yeah. Oh. I've got a related question, very related. Um, if the dependent, or if the dependency also has dependencies, is that all presented in one it's one, in one flat list, exactly. Yeah, one flat yeah. list, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's precisely done that, yeah. So transitive dependencies, also dependency of the dependency and the dependency. So everything is simply calculated, everything uh, imported at once. And just because um, the import is currently done uh, inactively in ABAP Git, uh, we can simply import it at once. And uh, afterwards, the activator does the rest for you. Thank you. Simply. Yeah, well, probably I can. Let me check. Ooh. So, once again, so. Let's see. Come on. So, that's now. Yeah. So that's the, um, the standard ABAP Git screen which you see. Um, nothing special, I would say, right? And, um, well, I have to check. So if, if you s simply say um, you want to, oh no, first, uh, other way around. So, uh, for example, JSON ABAP converter, and uh, I think I did it in test. Let's check. Yes, exactly. So here we go. Ah, yeah, that's the problem if you already, um, if you prepared something, of course it's already there. So that's the one, yes, of course I want to. That's the one which we already see here. So um, if you access this repository, um, you can, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So that's the standard export. Um, and as you can see here, this um, .apec manifest.xml is automatically generated. And uh, probably we simply try now uh, to change the, the manifest itself um, so um, in order to change the XML file. So that's probably the most simple thing we can do in the remaining minutes. So uh, if we go and log on now to the system um, and uh, check out, uh, for example, also all the existing implementations of uh, IF APEC manifest. So it's here. So um, that's pretty much the standard um, marker interface. And if we, uh, if we check the type hierarchy, we already see some implementations, especially uh, this double Y and JAK, which I mentioned already. And now probably um, we want to change a bit the version, right? So we increase the version number uh, to, to 0.2. And um, I simply activate that. And uh, then I go back to, yeah, it's just for the sake of the resolution. Otherwise, you could also say um, I execute the 
uh, transaction here straight away in, um, in ADT. But um, right now, for the sake of simplicity, I, where are we here? Uh, and resolution, we go here. So um, if we go back, ah, my God, and uh, check the repositories once again, um, then it's automatically uh, checking the, uh, automatically checking what's there on the system. So um, remember, I just uh, changed the uh, manifest uh, implementation here. So when we check uh, when we check out the diff, you will see okay, uh, this tiny little number, uh, this this line number has changed from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, and as said, automatically uh, this dot apec minus manifest dot xml um, is also also changed. Here we go. Yeah, from 0 0.2, uh, from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. It's really hard to see the yellow, right? Here on the projector. Anyway, so this one here is the change. Yeah, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Yeah, and now um, if you want to upload that to the central git file, uh, to, the, to the central GitHub, you simply say stage. Um, it um, sums up the changes which you've made. You could also do some uh, adjustments to that if you only want to um, add one single file, but in this case you basically need two. And um, then we simply say okay, uh, increase version to 0 0.2, say commit. So, and you're done. And of course I didn't do that on the official SAP um, repository right now, right? So that would be bad. So um, I have a backup uh, one, of course, in my personal space. Um, and uh, there we can see then this, um, this commit we've just done a few seconds ago. So that's, that's basically done. So as promised, uh, only change uh, the tiny little thingy in the class and uh, everything is uh, taken care of automatically by the export in the zabubgit or abubgit transaction. And it's already before time. Good. Questions about this one here? Okay. Thank you. Then, uh, yeah, tak kaldiha. Yeah.